Hi everyone, thanks for taking the time to listen to my talk today. Um, I'm Nick, I'm a new assessment biologist with the National Marine Fisheries Service, working on highly migratories in the Atlantic. And I was particularly interested, or very excited when I heard that this workshop was gonna be held, because this is a topic I've, I've thought about for, for some time now and asked quite a few folks about, not really gotten a, a concrete answer as to why uh, size structure assessments aren't more often developed for uh, hard to age fin fish stocks like, like tunas and other highly migratories. And so hoping today um, to uh, at least generate some discussion around that topic or come to a, a conclusion as to why. And so the idea is as follows. Um, tunas and other highly migratories are pretty hard to age. And for this reason, we oftentimes don't have age composition data on the removals uh, from the fisheries. We're often left with size composition data. Now I wanna leave open the possibility that this may also be due to the um, large scale and, and international nature of the fisheries, which might make coordinating a, a production agent program uh, difficult, but the fact of the matter is, is we are only availed of often size compositions, where maybe many other marine fisheries um, have age compositions on, on which to inform their fisheries assessments. Now, the predominant approach to assess tuna stocks, uh, from my experience, has been to develop age structured assessments. That is to say, they are fundamentally underpinned by a numbers at age matrix following cohorts through time, and to fit those models to size compositions by converting your catch at age to a catch at size um, by uh, specifying, you know, size at age distributions for each age. And so this can be done in, you know, stock synthesis as I've pasted here on the right, using a von Berlanffy function to define the mean uh, size at age and some variability about that, say using a CV. So you can fit those size composition data. Now there exists another species group, notably uh, invertebrate fisheries worldwide that are also hard to age and, and also only have uh, size composition data um, in terms of composition information for the removals from the fishery. Now, the size structured assessment um, enterprise has, has sort of decided to go a different route in terms of assessing their stocks. Instead of developing age structure models, the predominant approach has been to develop size structured assessment models, where instead of being underpinned by a, a numbers at age matrix, we're fundamentally following numbers and size bins through time, um, where individuals transition through size bins according to a growth transition matrix, which determines the probability of staying in your current length bin and the next time step or moving to any length bin greater than your current one. And in fact, many of these assessments have been developed right here in this part of the world, in um, New Zealand and Australia. So hopefully we have some expertise uh, willing to provide insight. And so the, the, the basic theme of this talk is, is why in the face of a similar issue, that is uh, not having age composition data related to the removals, why has one group preferred a size structured assessment approach and another an age structured approach? Are there fundamental and important differences in the population biology of these two species groups that would, that would dictate or warrant this change? Is it a function of limited software to fit size structured assessments and the nature, the fact that um, tuna fisheries is often managed internationally and we may have more strict regulations in the RMF modes for, for what software you're, you're able to use where domestically oriented invertebrate fisheries are maybe more flexible? Is it a function of limited exposure um, to size structured assessments by um, uh, tuna assessment analysts, or, or the converse for um, invertebrate assessment analysts. At the very least, I hope to, to, to squash that one at the end of the talk. Or is it something I'm missing? Um, are there more differences in the data available for the two species groups than, than I'm leading on, perhaps? And so at the very least, or not at the very least, but uh, frankly, what which is more appropriate you know, to use in the absence of age composition data? Is it more appropriate to use size structured assessment models? If so, should we more often try and develop these types of assessments for tunas and other hard to age teleos? Or you can imagine in a parallel universe, we'd be holding a CAPA meeting for you know, best practices in invertebrate fisheries assessments. And someone would be giving a talk saying, listen, the tuna fisheries don't, don't have age composition data, but they're developing age structured models. Why, why aren't we doing so? Now I'll spend the rest of this talk describing some nuances of, of size structured assessments and how they importantly differ from age structured assessments and do my best to synthesize a little bit of the literature that's been done on, on comparing age and size structured models against one another and basically close re-asking um, these questions on, on which is more appropriate and whether we should consider these for um, tuna fisheries assessments. So the first major difference between a, a size and an age structure model is that transition through the abundance matrix where we can no longer take convenient uh, use of the fact that a fish age one in year one has to be age two in year two and now we're transitioning according to a growth transition matrix. And so what's often done in size structured assessments is we include some additional information on growth. This often comes in the form of growth increments um, from tagging, where you have a starting length, a growth increment, and a time at liberty, which you can integrate into the assessment to fit um, using a, a, a growth model. And in fact, this is what I find this subject is all the more relevant for, for tunas and other highly migratories, is because we oftentimes have this 
tagging information available, um, and we're not fully integrating it into our, our fisheries assessments. And so there's three major decision points really with um, developing this, this matrix in the models. One, how you're defining your expected growth increment as a function of the starting size. And so the simplest way to do that is to use the uh, bon Bertalanffy as a function of size, which I posted here, which is just a linear decreasing function of starting length. And then you need to characterize the variability about those expected growth increments, which can often be done using a, a normal, a log normal, or a, um, a gamma. I believe what I'm depicting here is a gamma distribution. And that results in the size transition matrix you see uh, at the bottom right there. Then the third decision point has to do with um, um, including this data in the likelihood function. And, and so there's a few good publications on how to do this. And, and I don't think uh, we have enough time today to go over all the different options, but there's certainly different options as to modeling or the functional form of the expected growth increment, the variability, and then how to um, incorporate that data in, in a likelihood function. But I believe it's recommended that these data be integrated within the model. So other data sources can, can also help inform growth like your size composition data. Some recent publications have suggested you should allow for individual variation in growth um, and um, to incorporate it in the likelihood function using a multinomial process rather than a continuous uh, process using a normal or log normal. But anyway, those are details, I, th I think decision points by a, a specific analyst. And they're also gonna depend on the life history of the species. Now the next major difference between a size structure assessment and a structure assessment is how recruit recruitment's governed. Um, in a structured assessment, you know, it's quite simple. You have all your recruits entering the fish or entering the uh, population in, in, you know, your first age bin, oftentimes mate age zero. However, in a size structure model, it's a little more complicated. It's not necessarily as simple as recruiting into that first bin. It certainly can be, if deemed plausible. I, I imagine it won't be for uh, many tuna and, and finfish applications. Um, many invertebrate assessments choose to go this route. It, it may be more um, reasonable approximation for them. But what you can also do is uh, estimate parameters of a parametric distribution that defined how your recruits are allocated into um, size bins coming into each year. Or you can specify or estimate the size distribution at age zero. And it's important to remember that if you don't do this, it's important to think about whether or not you're classifying the size distribution of multiple age classes. And if you are, it might be prudent to make uh, recruitment independent of, of spawning stock size, because you won't know which necessarily spawning stock biomass is contributing to that recruitment. Um, and then, you know, I, I put up here at the end here, what what should we expect given a protracted spawning season for maybe a species like, like skipjack? Is it more reasonable to model it as age zero where we might have age zeros coming in, you know, at opposite ends of the year or being born at opposite ends of the year? Or is it better to model as, um, you know, recruiting into a, a starting size bin? Um, I'm agnostic as to, as to which I, I need to think more about it. Now, there are a few key advantages of size structured models over age structured models, and particularly when you don't have age composition data to inform relative year class strength and, and depletion. First of which is, is you need not rely on, on suspect age length data, which I'm seeing at least in the Atlantic. We're often um, looking across the uncertainty and how we define growth because of the um, uncertainty included in our, our size at age distributions. And you can make direct use of that growth increment data that we have from tagging by integrating it within the assessment. However, the main advantage is the ability to directly affect the abundance within size classes. In an age structured model where you are able to specify a size based fishery selectivity, you're not going to be able to affect the abundance of size classes within an age, right? You're still only gonna be removing fish as a proportion within an age class. And so the modeled size at age distributions don't change. And so a length structured model's ability to uh, account for this allows for a much better um, essentially incorporation of size-specific fishing mortality as it can directly change those size and age distributions and, and cascades into a better accounting for all the size-based processes. Now you can try and approximate this using platoons in, in stock synthesis. However, in practice, it's not often implemented. And there is some research which we'll see on um, in a couple slides that have shown this not to add uh, much value um, in terms of accounting for, for size-based fishing mortality. And what I pasted here on the right is, is that same review of, of size-structured assessments um, there's a really neat example from Punt et al. 2013 where they looked at if selectivity was knife edged at 50 millimeters or centimeters probably, the difference in the age structure of the population compared to the size structure of the population for an age based and length based model. So you can see the age structure of the population doesn't change much where the size structure is vastly different because the size structure model is much more appropriately able to account for that um, fishing mortality as a function of size, which is going to become very important for um, fish that are uh, 
uh, managed by length limits, um, as an example in the Atlantic, uh, things like swordfish, which are partially managed by length limits. Okay, so major disadvantages of size structured model. We saw that recruitment is a little more nuanced and, and will take some thought and, and tailoring to the life history of, of, of the species. Confounding has been noted to be more an issue with the estimation of the size transition matrix um, and additional parameters associated with that. Basically, you, you're not as clear on, on cohorts. So the um, processes of natural mortality, growth, and selectivity are all a little more confounded. But I don't know that you're necessarily getting around this in an age structure model fit to size composition because you still have to account for that growth. They do assume processes are size-based. So you have, if you have strong age-based processes, maybe based on ontogenetic movement, um, it, it, it won't be able to approximate that as well as an age-based model will in a similar sense to the, the previous slide um, where size structure models can more appropriately account for size-based processes. And then lastly, I was thinking, you know, close skin mark recapture might be a little bit more difficult to, to integrate given we're backdating. Um, it's fundamentally an age-based different uh, inference where we're backdating to the age of the offspring birth for parent offspring pairs and, and the birth year of the second born for, for half sibling pairs to inform on, on um, abundance and, and survival. Okay, so a brief look into the literature. Um, we did some research on a, a fin fish stock in the Great Lakes where when we left out age composition data and fit the assessment to size composition data, a size structured assessment perform much better than an age structured assessment fit to that size composition data. In fact, the, the age structure assessment ran into some severe confounding issues. With some activities. This was a neat study. It was a simulation study that um, developed a, an age and size based operating model and looked at both with and without platoons in the operating model and fit age, size, and age and size structured models uh, to the simulated data and found that size structured models did outperform age structured models in most of the scenarios. However, did, did conclude that age and size structured uh, was the best performing model. Um, but again, that's how the data were simulated. And found, interestingly, which I sort of quoted earlier, that the value of including platoons was not found to be substantial. And I left this, this quote in there, which is pretty eye-opening, um, insufficient to address the concerns of size selected fishing mortality. So it's, it seems like platoons, as they're currently formulated in stock synthesis, may, be, may not be our, our way out of, of better accounting of size-based processes to, to affect the model size at age distribution. And then there, there was a study that um, did a very similar uh, type of modeling, but on an, a, a, the Pacific Cod assessment this time, so not a simulation study. So they developed age structured, size structured, and age and size structured assessments to Pacific Cod. They were fit to conditional age at length data, at least the age-based ones, and they did not have growth increment data, which is an important thing to remember because most size structured assessments do have this data to inform that growth transition matrix. And they concluded that each fit the data adequately but concluded that age structured model did fit the data a little better than the other two, um, which was an interesting result. And um, however, they spent a good deal in their discussion suggesting analysts look across the structural uncertainty like this by developing uh, multiple models with different structures and consider ensembling. And in my experience, this is done in, in the Atlantic, but it's done via fitting a surplus production model and an age structure model, and then basically averaging the results. And so I was curious whether this might be an approach Moving forward with TUNA, where, where size structured assessments are more regularly developed as part of the assessment process, and, and using diagnostics, we can decide if, if they're um, adequate or not, or throw them out. Okay, the software question. Um, it's not as if there's no software to develop size structured assessments. Um, I believe Castle 2 has, which is developed right here in, in New Zealand, has size-based functionality. Uh, they offer a few different options for the expected growth increment, a few different functional forms. Um, they do, however, only offer normal uh, last time I looked in a manual, um, normal variance about the expected growth increment, which may be a limitation. Um, and then in the future, we do, uh, at the National Marine Fishery Service here, there's a new software package, the Fisheries Integrated Modeling System that's in development. I'm told size-based functionality should be expected in 2025 and 2026, but it's meant to be open source. And, and so I think it's it's actually the age-based model supposed to come out soon. And, and the um, developers mentioned that it could be development could be sped up if, if folks contributed uh, code. And I'm unsure of any others, so I leave that question open. With that, I, I just want to um, make an aside here. I haven't talked at all about age and size structured assessment models, which in, in Andre's recent best practices paper was suggested as, as a best practice moving forward. And there are multiple simulation studies now, and, and it seems like more and more that are coming out that suggest um, these outperform both of the just age or just size structured models. And I wholeheartedly agree this is the way forward and, and the eventual way we're going to end up with. Um, they are, you know, um, computationally intensive. Um, anyone who um, codes these types of models knows that once you add in, you know, the third, fourth, fifth dimension, automatic differentiation becomes very computationally um, expensive. 
And so this might come at the reduce at the cost of, of reducing some other computationally intense aspects of the model. Like I said, some recent papers have suggested incorporating individual variation and growth in your growth increment uh, formulation. And so, you know, I do wonder whether we could wholly skip uh, developing side structure assessments and move right to age and side structure assessment, or whether our, our computation isn't isn't quite there yet. And I'm unsure if there's um, a, a generalizable software package um, to implement these if, if it's required by your RMF, RFMO. So with that, I'll, I'll pose the question from, from the start again. Um, should tune assessments more often consider size structured models? Um, and I also want to open it up to other hard age teleos like, like swordfish and, and other highly migratory fish where we only have size compositions. And you know, it, it may be that <laughs> they're not, or they're implemented or developed more often than I've let on for fin fish stocks. And so if you've developed them in your RFMO, I'd love to hear about your experience doing so. And, and if you ran into severe parameter compounding or unreasonable estimates, and is it a problem of packages? You know, can we start developing these models in Castle 2, or, or should we wait till a, a more generalizable package is out um, to develop these uh, more regularly as, as a part of our assessment process to compare to the age structure models we're developing um, using you know some similar diagnostics that have that have all been described in the literature. And I just want to summarize. You know, I thought um, Punt et al. 2016 put it nicely here: three situations in which you might want to use size structure models. No data on the age structure of the population or the removals, which we a case we seem to be in in tuna fisheries. Many of the key biological processes are size rather than age-based. I think you can make an argument for that with tunas. And there's concern regarding the impact of size-selected mortality on the distribution of length at age. Um, certainly for some stocks, namely uh, uh, swordfish in the Atlantic, uh, that seems to be the case. With that, I'd like to acknowledge um, discussions I had with Matt Vincent and, and, and Andre Pun and refer you to all the papers that I, I cited throughout. Um, and hopefully I generated at least a, a modicum of, of discussion with this, with this talk. Thanks for listening.